Hey everyone, welcome to the Grey Effect podcast. I'm your host that does the most, Anthony Grey, and my guest today is... I'm not your guest. <laughs> it's my show. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, is my other half, Tasman Grey. Better half. No, nah, whatever. The best half. Um, I don't even know if it's a half, it's more like a quarter. Anyway. <laughs> um, today we'll be just touching on a little bit about um, her reaction on the NRLW uh, postponement. Um, what does that look like for her? Now the, we have six to seven months off. Um, surgery in the pipeline possibly. Um, and pretty much how does she, how's she feeling after all of this fiasco has gone on but to start we always will start with a little like icebreaker story something that you may not know about our guest or know about me um just to get everything flowing um an embarrassing story would probably be uh <laughs> do i share that same story I just said the same thing. Um, an embarrassing story would be, it's more embarrassing for me now looking back at it. Uh, I was like 12. I had a Motorola, two megapixel. Um, thought I was a bit of a dancer back in the day, uh, coming, through, coming through the ranks. Uh, so some I. Some <laughs> Yeah, some called me C. Knucklehead. Um, <laughs> and I set up my phone in my room. Um, jerking had just come out, it was a new thing. I thought I had aced the shuffle. So I was trying to mix the two, um, set it up in my room, no one around, obviously, music playing off an individ- an, another another phone, um, and I went at I it, know. yeah, You're a joke. yeah. <laughs> 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 went for it, recorded it, thought it was safe on my phone, but at the time, obviously, you had um, like memory cards in your phone, yo, yo, um, those yo, little yo. one gig memory cards that you thought yeah. you were killing it so you could save all your Bluetooth um, songs onto there, yeah, and then I, anyway... Um, a few years later, my brother had asked um, for m- the memory card because it was his memory card and I was just borrowing it. And I was like, oh, yes, we thought I had taken everything off, deleted everything. Um, well, I had deleted everything bar this one. The jerking video. The jerk video. And we were all around at like um, a family home evening and the big um, projector screens up and he presses play. And it's Tasman and, and a it's wife beater and Muay Thai kickboxing shorts. <laughs> yeah, but my shoes. And Air Maxes. Yeah, but my shoes were on. Um, but yeah, that's probably the most embarrassing moment. I was red ass because I was just like, no, that was meant to be in the archives only for me. But now uh, it's out there, and maybe one day you'll get to see how good of a joker I was. Hundred percent. We'll definitely get the clip off Geo, um, because it is a sight to see Tasman with a mullet. And a wife beater. With braces. No bra. <laughs> no bra. <laughs> <laughs> Nipples flopping everywhere. Um, anyway. Wow. All right. <laughs> What's yours? Can you beat it? Nah. I don't really. Actually, I've got one. Uh, it's just, just come to my mind. <laughs> but, um. All right. I'll, I'll make it short. So, I'm. Um, I've just started a new school, uh, Miller Ave, for those who know where that is, in Pairo. Anyway, I'm the new kid on the block, I think I'm hot shit, like, I think I'm killing it, right, like, who's this new dude, like, just coming to school. I'm only, like, 10, like, I'm legit 10, like, and these are my thoughts, like, I'm hot, like, I'm <laughs> that, you know what I mean? And um, I'm biking to school, right, and... Like, there's this thing, like, you come into the school, and then you, like, go, like, the pathway, you go down onto the netball court, right? And then you sort of got to come up, and then around past the classrooms to park your bikes. And I'm like, all the the girls are like, um, and, like, some of, like, my mates and that were, like, on the netball court. This is, like, just before school, like, playing around, whatever, shoots or whatever, and I thought I was the man. And you remember when you were, like, younger on your bikes and you used to, like, go on, like, one side? Like, 
<laughs> like ride one side, like put your leg over <laughs> and then like ride like that. Where yeah. that was, I was like, oh, yo, this is me. So I've come down like pretty fast and I've like put my other leg over like thinking I'm the, <laughs> thinking I'm the man trying to show off. Oi, not even joking. I freaking toes myself up and I fell off my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Shame. <laughs> oh, bro, honestly. And then, like, yeah, and then all the kids I literally, like, they away. like looked over, and I literally just like try to like pretend like nothing even happened. We, not even my, I freaking like lost my knee, like the skin off the top of my knees. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even ride my bike. I had to push it. Honestly, it was horrible. Hey, G. No, good time, Morgan. <laughs> nah, yeah. They were like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who the hell is that? Is that the new guy? <laughs> and I was just like... <laughs> embarrassed. Nah, days. I meant to do that. I meant to do that. <laughs> um, but, yo, well, that was um, just one of the many embarrassing stories that well, I thought I was the man, but uh, clearly wasn't. Like, taken, don't try to be the man <laughs> on the first day of school. I'm in new school. Um, none of them thought I was the man, too. They were... Yeah, they still don't like you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, <laughs> that's enough about me. Um, we'll go on to the NRLW and your guys' postponement. Um, what's your initial thoughts? Like, obviously, you got pushed back from the initial start date, um, and then, like, I'm your like I'm your husband, so I sort of know like your feelings behind and. You had even mentioned before that you're like, oh, this is probably it. Like, we're not going to have the comp. And, like, we even discussed, like, well, if we don't do it, if it ain't happening now, like, the what's happening in New South Wales isn't going away anytime soon and it's probably going to get worse. Yeah. So if we don't go now, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So when, it, like, the news broke to you and you had that, that chat with uh, the CEO, was it more of, like, just a, like, like a shock or like was it like ah oh yeah whatever like at least we know now um yeah it was just kind of like a let you down slowly kind of moment uh we had kind of known not known but we were prepped for anything at, the, at that time so when we got the news um it wasn't too much of a shock if anything it was just like why um there was so much doubt and question around so many different aspects of um what had happened how it had happened why were we left in the dark for so long kind of thing um and i understand that like obviously it's a business and there's so many other things that need to come into play um but at the time obviously being so annoyed and frustrated with you know just making us not yeah wait around um but left out on the lurch left out in the lurch and there was like so many other girls in so many different situations that were probably worse off than a lot of us but at the same time it was kind of like you want answers for them but then also you want answers so you know what you're doing for the rest of the year because at, th- at that time we were just kind of left in limbo are we training for something are we doing um can we go back just to our what jobs the hell like, are we yeah doing? it was just kind of like you're in like a plateau moment where you're like training but you don't know what you're training for so you're training extra hard for something that you know probably isn't going to happen um and then to be put on a phone call and you know you're given all these options and then you're pretty much told that these options aren't available to you anymore because they've kind of made their decision mm. um, but we have a say kind of thing and just kind of making us feel involved but we're really not kind of added more frustration to the uh, fuel to the fire kind of thing um, so yeah it was re- a real frustrating time obviously now knowing that we don't have a season um, we're not playing any footy till next year is kind of like a a bittersweet because obviously to make our game go forward we have to play footy and to be able to grow the game um we have to play footy and i felt like the game was in such a good place uh we had worked so hard over the last five years to get it to where it needed to be and i feel like we've made so many sacrifices as women to get it to that point that um almost having a year of you know um semi-professional footy is a lot for 100%. a female sport and it's like five steps forward we'll take a couple yeah. back type of yeah. scenario and it, especially for you guys like you have put in the hard work to make the product better yeah like to be at a better standard so it's more appealing for the viewer 
and then yeah. for that to get like out of your control because it was out of your control like to then get that taken away it's kind of like what have we worked all this like yeah we're gonna get to play next yeah. year but that doesn't dismiss the fact yeah that well it's like you're gonna be- get to play next year but how is our product gonna get better because we're not playing footy and yeah. it's almost gonna be like the start of the year will be a comp and then we'll go back to bhp like club club footy and then we might we'll have origin, origin and then we have another comp at the end of the year but the and inconsist- yeah and, and then, then a world, world cup. cup then we'll hopefully a world cup but the inconsistency of those comps is like another thing as well yeah, that we have like, to take into like consideration it's just a roller coaster yeah because we'll be playing like from the start of the year we'll be playing like at a, like at a high level at a high level professional level um and then bhp is professional but it's semi yeah it's semi, semi, that's it's that's like more semi professional that's sickening yeah great. and then we're going to go into an origin where that's like above high, yeah. that's probably like the highest yeah point with in the m- yeah, with it with international being taken into consideration yeah. but that's not till the end of the year as well and then we're going to another NRO, though, which will scout like, which will then obviously bump up another level Just from like Origin. Psh, psh, psh. Yeah, so it's like a. I don't know. Personally, I don't know how we are meant to manage that without playing the game of footy for the next um, three months, or so. And we haven't played already for the last since June. Since June, so it'll be like eight months off footy. Um, for a lot of girls, that's a that's like that's like a whole injury. That's an ACL. Yeah, that's a, like a pregnancy. Off, yeah. So it's everything. like, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating because, you know, we could have, if we had, if obviously we didn't know, but we can't blame everything on COVID. Um, we knew that that was very much it's in the. It's been a thing yeah, for a while. Very now. much in the um, pipelines for the last two, yeah, two seasons, years now. Yeah. Um, and we had always worked around it. So I always thought that after the, be a yeah, way. there would be a way that we could work around it since we had done it last year. Uh, but obviously with everything that's gone on this was the result and now it's just trying to adapt to that and um prepare in the best way possible to obviously play next year but also um find something to fill the time because obviously that's a long time without going to play and nothing's going to prepare you more than playing footy than playing footy so yeah it's a bit you of can a train one. all you yeah. like hey but you can do a whole preseason. i think i was saying this other day like you can do a whole preseason from November to February, like a good four months, still get out in your first trial match and be blowing, like yeah, exactly. after five minutes. Like, there's nothing like footy, you know? And I think it opens up a massive window for injury as well. Obviously, we have only just come into like a semi professional environment, and it has been taxing on us, like, as women and trying to, like, you know, accommodate for everything. surgery every year. Uh, yeah, accommodate for everything in. Um, our lives as well it's been out of work obviously there's lots of women that has to work family and then the play dynamics footy, so like the dynamics in like the women's game like is ridiculous yeah. like you have mothers full-time workers part-time workers mothers still yeah. like it's just like it's not a, like a consistent like um demographic yeah. like everyone's got a different situation but the beautiful thing within the women's game and about the woman is that it doesn't matter what situation they're in they're always willing to sacrifice yeah. and they've always sacrificed no matter what it is like no matter what their sacrifice is they've made it yeah. and so and then for it to be like okay sweet now it's like up to the nrl like are you going to back us you know what i mean like we've been sacrificing yeah. for years now like is the faith going to be repaid and then it hasn't yeah, it's, it's kind of just like man it's put a dim light over 100 percent. it kind of just created a bit of doubt like we, we're willing to do this and we're, we're always willing to put our best foot forward for the game and there's so many women that have done that um now and, and the, the pioneers, pioneers of our game have definitely done that so um yeah our, our way of giving back to the game and for the game for what they've done for us is by sacrificing 100%. and it might be little and it might be big but it's a sacrifice that we were always willing to make but i think mm. we've all come to a point where um sacrificing everything for a game isn't worth it anymore especially when you yeah especially when you're giving situations up situations like they yeah, say like you're giving up everything your time like your life your life your livelihood um to only be called semi-professional or oh. it's, it's rude, kind eh? of like a slap in the face that's rude 
it's kind of like a slap in the face because my like my family personally my family don't miss out on having having me around for something that's semi professional like i give all of myself oh. to be able to play a game that i love to set an example for them or like to like you know and to you live said out a dream like you said yourself or like on that the caption that you wrote um or that i wrote no um that that you released saying that um like your commitment's not like the woman's commitment's no. not semi professional um you just don't just rock out and play whenever like use a training every single day yeah. your sacrifice isn't semi professional so to be labeled a semi professional athlete is a slap in the face it's just rude like downright yeah. rude and like a complete lack of respect for you as a human being and as an athlete yeah but i think that's where the that level of understanding like each individual as in, in their story and understanding the sacrifices that everyone has made. Um, I understand we're not the men and we're not trying to, you know, be like them. Yeah, we're trying to just promote our game and play Same the game. Same game yeah. our way. Yeah, like we're not, we're, we're like, we're not men. 100%. And we're never going to be able to do the things that men can do. Like we're women, we can only stay in our lane and do, mm. you know, um, mm. make the best out of the talents that we have. But that doesn't like, mean that we don't deserve you know the a fair crack yeah, a fair crack at um anything really but a and respect yeah. and i think that's all we want is just respect within our game and what we're trying to do as women and f for the game um because if we like if i like i'd be the first to put my hand up if we weren't doing anything for the game and it wasn't um helping the game then i wouldn't like i'd be like sweet yeah, we're not we're 100%. not meant to be here kind of thing but I feel like we're at a part, like we're at a stage now where we can make things happen for ourselves, and we finally had built the game to where it um, had time, like had an opportunity to flourish. Um, we've, yeah, like we're there's comps now for younger girls to be able to play from. That's the, crazy. Yeah, yeah, we're just watching from yesterday. six all the way through to to um, NRLW or to play for Australia. So there's no, they're not missing out anymore, and I feel like missing out on an NRLW to it might not um it might be all right for us as players um to not play but there's young girls that are aspiring to be like us so they miss out on watching their the, their their idols you know what i mean um play and i feel like that has a big effect on our game as well it's not just us as athletes that are affected it's our families it's our fans it's it's like everyone it's, everyone, it's like eh? it's a community that miss out on and you it's know. a huge community yeah, like exactly. it is the group biggest like it is growing the biggest like part of the game out of like the entire game so it is a large um part of the community and i think like that's what like was that taken into consideration you know what i mean like it's yeah. crazy to think like nowadays there's actually like little girls <laughs> that idolize you women you yeah. know what I mean? Like, they're, they're not looking... Like I know back in the day, like, who did you look up to when you were playing? Darren or, like, Lockyer. when you were a little kid? Lockyer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's who, like, the girls. Like, I'm sure, like... Um, like, the Ellie Briggins Like, Shores, now it's like Boyle. Ellie, it's like Millie, Izzy. Jess Surges, Izzy, Kizzy. Yeah. Like, all these, all these girls, like, even the ones back home, like Georgia. Yeah. Like, Hawley. Hawley. Like, Chris. these are all, like, household names. It's just, yeah. it's crazy to think, like, there's genuine superstars of the women's game and the effect that they have on the next generation coming through. Yeah, and I think, like, it's, as a whole, us as a game and as, like, the NRW, we've had to make huge sacrifices. Like, there's girls that have to have, have had to move countries. Bro, shout they, out yeah. those New Zealand girls. Exactly. Holy. Like, that for the last two years, they've had to... um move to make to accommodate for our to you keep know, the comp alive keep it alive and to keep their team like their home team alive so for them to move over here has been like a massive sacrifice and now obviously with them um those girls are still, that, stuck, they're still here. stuck here and they're still waiting to get home like i think i seen a post Did you see autumn's from, yeah, thing from autumn and she's like thirteen thousand in, in the queue and, and like imagine not to, like you came over here you sacrificed all that time to come over here and i understand that you like we didn't know that this was going to happen but now that they're stuck here it's like 
What are they stuck here for? You know what I mean? Get them home, cuz. Yeah. Do something. So it's like, it's just like frustrating to see every like part of the game and the dynamics of what's happened um, come to a full halt and a stop. Because now it's like, what can we do for them or what can we do for ourselves pretty much like now that i look at it i'm like holy holy crap i'm only labeled semi semi professional and now i'm having to adjust my life to be like a stay home mum that works from home you know what i mean like and that's like life without footy like once footy finishes what am i going to do with my life and i'm only semi professional so i can understand now what why the nrl have done a lot of things outside of um playing rugby league because there's a, like it, it is actually like holy crap what am i going to do now yeah and i'm sure like it's different for everybody because there's like women that have given up their jobs for this season yeah. heck they can't even get their jobs back you know what i mean like what are they gonna they can't even like put food on the table exactly. like they can't pay their rent they can't do nothing like what where is the help now yeah. Like, yeah, we can't, like, well, you couldn't foresee the future, but sweet, all good. Like, where's the support? Yeah. Like, surely we can and support I think, like, those women. Because we made so much noise around um, certain situations, it forced their hand to, you know, give us some... A little bit of remuneration. Yeah, re- yeah. Well, rele- like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, rem- whatever that word is. Um, and it forced their hand, but at the same time, it's like, there's still like that's only gonna cover that period of time yeah what about the next few months what about the next few months like obviously girls are stuck here so they're gonna have to get jobs like there's so much that we did it like we as a community are talking about or as players are talking about but i don't think the the people that need to understand understand that our situations or their situations because now they're just left to kind of pick up the pieces and trying to fix what sh- should never have been this should never have happened kind of thing mm. um and that's like that's yeah that's just one that's just one thing that i don't think um the nrl understand as a whole is that there's a lot of athletes now stranded yeah and like i don't uh, i think that's literally like all the women are asking for is just that like be given a fair go and shown like a decent amount of respect for you as a human being and as an athlete like i think they didn't comprehend how much a woman actually sacrificed for the game and that's why there's so many problems right now is because the woman who signed deals with the nrl in their clubs hedged their livelihoods on Mm. it like they literally put their lives on hold quit everything drop everything to sign on the dotted piece of paper for this game and now that it's not on that's why there's so many problems because that's like that's the stakes that the woman like brought to the table yeah but that's the hardest part is that like only only we know or the stories that are shared that's that's all that's all everyone gets to see but only we as players know each other's sacrifice. 100%. And, like, that's what the rest of the people or, like, the trolls out there, that's what they don't see. And so it's easy for them to, like, make comments, say things. It's just, it's, it's a just, business. Yeah, it's they don't make any money. It's shit product. It's this, it's but that. But, uh, yeah. But in Shut saying up. that, it's like, okay, um, that's all happened now, so what's next? Yeah. And I think it's like, as much as it's been, like... A, shitty experience um at the same time i'm someone that would like to take positivity out of the situation so for me when it's life like, gives yeah. you lemons grab the lemonade nah, <laughs> make lemonade <laughs> grab the lemonade nah um yeah so for me now it's just like okay what am i going to do next how do i adapt to this how do i change things and like to be honest like um well-being wise like my own state of mind it's been hard like it's had it like it's been hard to try and adapt to life and what that is going to be for the next three months because obviously uh, i felt like i had a great season i had started to tick boxes and like reach goals that i 
had um, set for myself this year and to have that knocked back, um, it's kind of, yeah, it kind of just like rattled me a little bit because I had obviously trained so hard to get to where I needed to be and then now that it kind of almost feels like it was a waste of time. Um, and obviously we had set some big goals for yeah. like me as a player this year to achieve that because obviously at the end of this year I wanted to retire and just like spend time growing our family and so now that that's come to a halt it's like okay is it worth going again yeah going again do I do that and I think that's what's been the hardest thing it's like questioning if it is worth it so are you saying you're retiring no uh no (laughs) definitely not um so yeah that was that's been like one thing is like okay I could have had it all done but then again I'm like looking at it like everything happens for a reason and there was definitely a reason why this all has has happened um and the best thing I can take from it now is that I have an opportunity to grow our business businesses I have an opportunity to be at home a lot more the girls are getting older and they obviously want mum home a lot more and so that's they hate for it yeah they hate it (laughs) and that's one thing that obviously I find really hard is like not Obviously, a role as a mum is to be, you know, the matriarch of our home, to, you know, be home and to be there. Well, just uh, enough. Wait, what about last night, Valan, when you said, who's this? And you said, t- you said, Tasman Gray, who's that? And Valan literally said, the footy player. Yeah. <laughs> and as, yeah, like. Okay, not mum? Yeah, I was like, um, I'm your mum. Um, but yeah, like, I, I love that. I'm trying to set an example for them to, you know, yeah, reach their dream and, yet, and to do whatever they they want to, like if they want to be whatever they want to be, they can achieve it regardless of the situation that they're in. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I know that it's created a lot of insecurities in them as well. Mm. And that's one thing that obviously I have to live with. But at the same time, I just hope that one day they wake up and they realise that, oh, mummy didn't just do it to leave us or to not want to be around us or... Anything Chasing like the that. fame and the yeah. glory. I want them to obviously realise that it's for a bigger cause. <laughs> but yeah, I nah. <laughs> But yeah, I do but like yeah, it's being nice. away from them. Um, but yeah. But I think like this is just from my perspective, um, just wrapping this like whole thing up, is like it's been cool to see um just how you uh females, like athletes, have like gotten around each other. You know what I mean? Like even Oh, like it, within your own clubs, but even like the girls from the other clubs, like checking yeah. in on one another, like making sure everybody's like taken care of. Yeah, like that's been a cool thing to see. Like you guys rally together and like take care of each other. Yeah, I think that's one thing that the footy community brings is like friendship, and you create some pretty cool friendships within the game. And um, some of my best friends are, are like I met through footy, so I think that's been like the the best part is that we're not just athletes and we're not just individuals. We're all like, we're like one big family. And if the NRL say we don't have a season, then as long as we know that we are, we're in it together and we're all willing to, you know, um, band together and help each other. That's, that's been the coolest thing for me is to just like know that regardless of what's happened, um, everyone's got everyone's got each other's back and they're willing to fight the good fight to, see some results and to help each other oh good all right well on that note um shout out to all the female athletes out there not just footy players but like and all your other codes in that like that are sacrificing and fighting the good fight like we appreciate you and like and i'm sure the next generation and the people that'll put on the jersey after you will appreciate you know your sacrifices and your hard work um but until then um We'll see you guys in the next one, eh? That's cool.